my God. Somebody tweeted that Julius Randle is one of the best players in Knicks history. <laughs> well, like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Certainly the last about? 20 years, though, I mean. Not even. Come on. He's awful. <laughs> last 20 years. Last 20 years, I mean. Last 20 years. He you know makes how a, bad we Last he 20 makes years? A, he makes a Bleacher Report list. Last 20, what, is put it, it 20th? Put it, put it on the poll, Juju, at Levitard Show. Is Julius Randle one of the best Knicks of the last 20 years? Because I think he is. He is. He is. has to be. 20 no years. Doubt. You make an all-star team, you're on the list. 20 years takes you back to 2003. Right. So then Allen Houston is on that list. Is Allen Houston on that team? Allen Houston. O3? Yes, he was. Oh, three team, you, yeah. Okay. He was there, he was yep. there until I was. I'll, I'll concede that. You still have to, you have to have 15 strong. Here. Carmelo Anthony. Yes. He's on it. Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire. We're not He's doing on it. Steve Novak. We're not doing Are this. you going to put Jeremy Lin well, hold over on a second. Julius Randle? The first say. couple of months of Amari Stoudemire, yes. The first yes. couple of days of Jeremy Lin. the MVP. I think, I, mean. on the whole, I think on the whole, Amari is still better <laughs> at his peak than Julius um, Randle. Amari's Nick career. Yeah, but Julius Randle's the depth hold behind on, him. Hold on. Tyson Chandler. Okay. Defensive not, player of the year. Pablo Prigioni. Deep boy. Yeah, we're not doing this. No? No. Julius Randle makes a team. He does you don't want to give team. that to him. He's a starter on that team. No, he's not. He's, yes, he is. He's backing up Amari. No. I, what? I want to Get stop this. Amari I stop was good for two sports six wins. Well, wait, just, I've had enough of Julius Randle in general. Uh, Mike Ryan called him an assortment of names during last year's playoffs. Oh, he stinks. That were not. Uh, but I he think, makes a team I think because that team stinks. Yes, right, you called exactly. him a garbage can. Yes. Uh, but I'm glad that we've got this combination of chemicals in here today because I've been wanting for a week to get to this story, but I needed the right people to talk about it with. Marbury. So, um, oh, wow. Marbury. Starberry. Jamal does, Crawford. Dude. Jamal Marbury, Crawford. Marbury Jake doesn't crossover. make it. You're just saying. Marbury does not make it. You're just saying it. names. Right. Marbury though. doesn't make it? No, you're cheating. You're I mean, just saying players that we rate at moments in time, but certainly not during their Knicks years. He was great with the Knicks. What are you talking about? I, not they as weren't as good. Julius Randle no, he was. was better. I'd rather have Julius Marbury. Randall's, Randall's been MVP good. Moves. I'd rather have Marbury. <laughs> at, at forward, by the well, way. I mean, that's not I'd rather have debate. Marbury at power forward. <laughs> at power forward. Really. But that's not really. the debate. Come on. We're, we're applying a conventional <laughs> sense of people that, that aren't co-chairs of people who know ball. <laughs> Last week, and I know this triggered Stugatz, because uh, there is very little that Stugatz hates more as the voice of the fan. Anyone in sports who's being paid a lot of money telling fans how to behave when Stu Gatz believes that he is entitled as a customer to behave the way that he wishes to behave. Within reason, Dan. Uh, yeah, but uh, everybody defines that differently. What right. within reason is, and you extend that further out into the extremes than I do because you don't mind uh, heckling or insulting a, a player. When they deserve it, yeah. And I don't – that's not for me, but un- – Well, understood, it's up to me. Uh, understood. I decide. That's within right. reason, you mm-hmm. decide what is your reason. I don't right. trust generally your reason. <laughs> your fair. reason yeah. is not trustworthy to me. Mm-hmm. But when it – Not ca- offended. When it came to uh, Kawhi Leonard returns his shooting free throws, and then Greg Popovich takes the fairly extraordinary act of, like, he's talking to a high school gym. He's a principal of some sort. Well, he and, wanted to be a D3 coach, Dan. So. And he talks mm-hmm. to Spurs fans. And he simply yells at them, <laughs> yells at them into the microphone that they are not that that is not who they are. That San Antonio fans are classier than that. And he tells them to stop booing and heckling Kawhi Leonard, who I think, and I don't know what the reporting has been on this, how accurate it is, because the stuff around Kawhi is so muddled and he's so quiet. But I'm pretty sure that Kawhi feels failed. By that entire organization led by Greg Popovich, and I think he feels failed by their medical staff, and it's part of why he left. And so those fans are mad at him. They booed him. What did you think of all that? They have every right to boo Kawhi Leonard. And what is Pop doing? You have to have better things to do while you're coaching your team than doing that, than grabbing a microphone and addressing the fans. You know what? I paid good money. And if I feel like I want to boo Kawhi Leonard, who is now – Two or three teams removed from the San Antonio Spurs. Left there under your watch, Greg Popovich, because you were doing something wrong. He was not comfortable there. He got out. He went to Toronto. Now he's with L.A. If the fans want to come back and boo Kawhi Leonard, they have every right to do so. There are only a couple of times where a coach would grab a microphone in an arena and address the fans. Before the season, first game of the night, you know, first game of the season, 
You address the fans. You thank them. I love that. A little thank you message from the coach right before the season starts. We appreciate your support. That, you can do it. If fans are launching things onto the court or, you know, a <laughs> hockey rink or a field, things that are dangerous to players, then you can grab a mic and address the fans, okay? The only other time is when a little girl is failing at singing the national anthem <laughs> and you have to rush to help her out, okay? Mo Cheek, great job by him. Those are the only times you can grab a microphone if you're a head coach in the NBA. You cannot do it. When fans, and not all the fans were doing it, Dan, not all the fans were doing it, just a handful of them were doing it, you cannot, while coaching a three-win team, come to the microphone and say, hey, stop booing Kawhi Leonard. Give me a break. I'll boo whoever I want to boo, including you, Pop. Uh, for the uninitiated, and this was a couple of days We're ago. Terrible. I'm not totally sure you got the Maurice Cheeks story totally right. He I don't did, I, I, did, I did he grab the he, microphone because I did. remember he him just her sort of, no. Yeah, but I remember him just uh, sort of putting his arm around her, comforting her. I don't remember him picking up the microphone and talking. It's to one of the great moments in American history. For me, it's top five, right behind Oshi. I mean, okay, very good. Uh, for the uninitiated, this is old, but let's uh, let's just check in on Popovich. Excuse me for a second. Pops on the mic. stop all the booing and let these guys play? Oh, it's shut up. Class. It's not who we are. Knock off the booing. Not who we are. Here's who we are. We tanked to get Lemon Yama. To lay off Kawhi Leonard. I love that they booed more after he said that. Well, here's the thing: if you're Pop, you uh, he's he's a smart guy. How can uh, he had to know telling incredible. fans not to boo would make them boo, boo more, and so. Me, okay, that's what I mean. I think he was. Proving he wanted something. more booze. Well, no, I think he was. I think he was trying <laughs> to make himself look oh, no. like the good guy, wow. being like, "Oh that's no, no, don't boo him." Right and on. then he's like, "Well, of course they're going to keep going, and then no. it'll be more where he can say, don't poke the bear.' Still don't get it. Still don't get that.' <laughs> trying to save face with with Kawhi Leonard on the line, he comes up, "Guys, stop! Let's stop this booing! Come on, Kawhi! I, I got you! I got you!" Or he right. was icing Kawhi, right. he... but Kawhi hates him. I mean, exactly. That's why he's trying to save face. Oh, no. I, mean, I mean, you had a great take on on ball, and I'm gonna ask you to microwave it real quick because I I came away watching this as it happened. What are you doing? This is clown behavior. And I don't know what's going on inside your mind if you feel guilty about the whole Kawhi thing, but we the audience are not your pawn in all of this. That's a that's, you never see that. There's two different levels to this. Level one is I want to ask Dan a question. Dan, you said, oh you're not into like heckling whatever. Are you anti booing? Not heckling, not calling people names, not talking about their family, just not using booing. Sort of, just the word boo. No, no, I'm not. I'm not You're anti boo. No, I'm not against booing. I'm not against booing. I, I the, the part about this story that I found uh, most interesting is that Popovich has been a king so long in that market that he actually thought going to a microphone Bang. and telling well, them the something Pop, would right? work. Bang, yes. I couldn't. I don't know that he thought it would work. He absolutely <laughs> thought. I lord over all of yeah, this. Yeah, I run this town. And they're going to be, oh, sorry, Pop. I Shut appreciate up. your theory. I do, Charlotte. No, <laughs> it's a great theory. You got to zig when they zig. If, if Popovich is indeed <laughs> smarter great. than everyone, and I don't know why Next it is level. he took out Duncan yeah. so that Bosch could get that rebound. But if he is smarter than everybody... Absolutely. That is the third eye move of I will go over there. You want to know how I win in every circumstance? I will look like the good guy. I will look to everybody like I am protecting Kawhi like I didn't when his body needed protection. Bang. But really what I want is more booze. <laughs> but I'm going to get them to boo more at my arrogance. You, yeah, you, you want to know the smartest thing ever? Remember when they were 3-2 and two and everyone said, oh, maybe Wembenyama could take them to the playoffs? They've lost 12 games in a row. That's how very, smart is that? That's not a very nice imitation of me. I mean, of Mike Ryan. That was how Mike Ryan said it with his arms. Uh, and hands uh, like the Swedish like chef. Yeah. <laughs> like, Morgan, uh, Morgan, Morgan. Yeah. Whenever I get excited, I move my arms around and I make points. Oh. And people Shut are starting up. to open their eyes. This, this is my this is my pop point. Beyond the, just the, the right to boo. Everyone in sports has a right to boo. Mm -hmm. That we can't take that away. To act like that's unclassy or whatever. Shut the hell up, number one. Especially a guy who left your franchise and won that's, somewhere else. That's my point that I draw at, at, in oddball, which is the reason they're booing, because he didn't do this when they booed Paul George or they booed anybody else. The reason they're booing that guy 
is because he's a villain in San Antonio. Why is he a villain in San Antonio? Because when he was hurt and he said, I'm not ready to play, the Spurs organization used every single dirty trick of leaking stuff repeatedly, consistently to the press. He's not that hurt. Tony had the same injury. And then we had a team meeting. and all. They, did. they did all of those things to make him look like trash. And so the fans are like, yeah, this guy isn't, he's not down for the cause like Tony and Manu and Timmy. So, of course, they boo him. You taught them to boo him. I don't think that people totally understand what an enormous source of tension in the offices of basketball it is. The load management questions, Dugat. When the Miami Heat are paying Jimmy Butler $500,000 or $600,000 a game, do you think they want to be hearing from him or his agent on he's not playing the second night of back-to-backs? Like, just across the sport. It's not just Jimmy Butler. I'm just make it across the sport. Do you think any of these people, when it's five hundred dollars to $600,000 a game, right. you are paying They don't them. want to hear it, Dan. And, and where it is that Kawhi Especially left. during the in-season tournament. I mean... <laughs> Kawhi Leonard ended up. I can't think of a lot of people that San Antonio's fan base are angrier about that have played there in the history of that market than they had a superstar. They watched win a championship somewhere else who didn't trust the organization medically about his body and left. For me, it was just really about Pop, and he thinks his words matter. He thinks his words matter more than anyone else's words. He thinks his hugs after the game matter more than any other coach's hugs after the game. Like, who made Pop? Who put Pop in charge of the NBA and player relations in the NBA? Every single game, the opposing star that he's playing against gets a big handshake, a big hug, a big smile, and Pop thinks it means more to that player than any hug, any smile, any handshake from any other coach. And he's wrong. Overrated, Pop. I mean, he's not that good of a coach. I mean, put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Does Greg Popovich think his hugs matter more than the hugs of other human beings? Do it without Hall of Famers, Dan. How about that? As yeah. as one myself, that was egomaniacal behavior. Thank you. from Greg Popovich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was narcissistic, right there. That's what all that was. It and takes it, one to know one, and it also is distancing <laughs> himself from. The Frankenstein's monster that he created, right? It's not just narcissistic. Right. Like, an, I, oh, you're gonna make me the bad guy yeah. here. You want to feel better about yourself, so you're just gonna tell this amorphous blob of fans that they're the ones that are wrong. No, it's it's it, it, it's ridiculous, and uh, to me, it all comes down to, like you said, narcissism. David Lee, I take over. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for Dan Against, Against the Spurs. Spurs. Getting into it, Mike. Wow. <laughs> what a year against the spread we've had. And we're coming down to the wire as the year is ending. And we are so close to the big grand prize. Oh, and you could be there on hand in person to see the big grand prize mm. handed out to the winner of Against, Against the, the Spread. spread. On December 11th, whether or not the Dolphins get flexed out or not, that doesn't matter. It's brought to you all by Miller Lite and Dollar Shave Club, and it's going down 815 at the Miller Lite stage at Vivo Miami, in Doral, Dolphin Mall. Free to the public, all ages, come out and touch Dan Levitard. Dan, you kick us off, even though you are mathematically eliminated. <laughs> what if Dan doesn't want to be touched? I mean. Give him a shot. Double or nothing here. You kick us off on against <laughs> the spread. Who you got, Dano? So I have to pick a game from this evening, from uh, later in the week. You uh, can pick an and, NFL and game if you'd like. You, you know yeah, how this works. Throughout the weekend, Dan. Mm -hmm. I, you do this thing. Yeah. Where you pretend to not know the well, rules. I, I lack some Bad comprehension. I lack some enthusiasm for this segment. I want to get to the useless sound montage. There, so you there. should pick up the pace then. Yeah. If someone mm -hmm. wants to get done with something quickly, they they want to get to it. Get to it. I'll take yeah. the Dolphins. Really? What's I don't the spread? know. I don't know anything wow. about what the spread you is. You can't just game. say I'll take the Dolphins. You no. got to do the whole thing. Everyone yeah. knows yeah. how Everyone this goes. Knows. I don't have the point spread. Just in front say of me. I'm taking the Dolphins. Minus nine and a half. The Dolphins minus nine and a half again. 
Friends. The spread. Now over to Sue Gotts. Mike, there's a big game this weekend in college football. There are several big games in college football. I'm going to go with the SEC championship game. I've been telling Georgia all year to do it against Alabama. They have a chance to do it this weekend, and they're not going to do it. Therefore, I am taking Alabama plus five and a half, according to DraftKings, to win the game, cover the spread, win the game outright, and cover the spread. So Alabama plus five and a half. Again, Again, the spread. Jessica, now, why? listen, buy the hook and a little money line wouldn't hurt either. I mean, Jessica, why are you so angry about that? He took that? mine. Oh, I'm an Alabama fan now, Dano. Oh, but get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Stugatz took my pick, so I'm going to take the Georgia Bulldogs. Wow. Minus five and a half wow. against Alabama. Weird. Again, that is a great strategy that what? she just deployed because she's trying to win this grand prize, right? And she's aware of what Sue got. That's a champion's advantage, basically. Billy, what, what is your thing? You buying it down to five, or what is your confusion there, Billy? That she I was going to take Alabama and then she just takes Georgia because Stugatz took Alabama. Yes, I'm and. trying to win the game, Billy. <laughs> Look, he learned. <laughs> I am rooting for a chaos scenario in the college football playoff. Either two SEC teams or no SEC teams. If Alabama wins, you can't do one and one. Something wow. crazy has to happen, which is why I wanted Alabama. But since Dugat took Alabama and I want to win the game, I'm taking Georgia right. against the, the spread. spread. We now the ca- root for chaos. The cast of Oddball hasn't been with us for the entire time we've been doing against the spread. But for them, we've made a special exception where it's just winning percentage, not overall what? record. And that puts what? them into contention. What? To get the big mystery prize at Dolphin Mall on December 11th at the Miller Light stage. No. So, you have to be present to claim the prize. Yeah. Good point. Judges, I mean, we go over to you. <laughs> uh, no, you don't have to be present. You can <laughs> I mean, pick it up the day. You. you can pick it up the day after. Perfect. All right, great. Which coincidentally is when you. I fly in. Yeah, but it also may affect your ability to win the prize. Why is that? Because this is all subjective. Because no one is keeping to... records no, on they, this. Not true. <laughs> what? Oh, That's very right. untrue. No, I have it on my Mike phone. Mike said I'm in first place. There what's my, what's my percentage, Mike? Yep, it's up there. It's oh. up there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to play the game. I have PTSD from trying to play this game. Well, if you get to watch me and do it, and then you sure. go after it. <laughs> Guys, the Denver Nuggets are seven and a half point favorites against the Rockets, but here's the deal. Uh-oh. Jamal Murray may be coming back. Maybe. Aaron Gordon. Maybe not playing. Ooh. Jokic, maybe not playing Ooh. also. Peyton Watson, maybe not playing. A lot of questionables. Wow. I'm going to go with the Houston Rockets plus seven and a half. Against, against the spread. spread. It's brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DAN when you sign up on the app for a limited time offer for new customers. Charlotte Wilder, you're up next. Well, I panic whenever this happens, and I turn to Jessica, <laughs> and she helps me out, and I'm going to take Oregon against Washington at minus nine and a half against yes. the spread. That is a gutsy pick right there. I'm going to be quick with it. Wow. I agree, and I'm going to take your very same pick because I want to keep pace no, you with one of the lead the dogs. Team. No, 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 no. no. Oh, wow. I have been pick betting against team. Washington what? for the last month and a half, and by God, I'm going to get them. Wow. Going with the Oregon Ducks, and Bo Nix ends up winning the Heisman. You're chasing Washington. Against yeah. the spread. I still think Washington's being disrespected. Sometimes. I mean, it's plus nine and a half. They're undefeated, and they already beat Oregon. <laughs> what is happening here? I mean, they've they've been playing really close games against I know. not so great opponents, even though Wazoo is a rivalry game. But they keep winning them. They've been them. winning them. Right. Yeah. Am I right? And now you're giving me nine and a half. It's the eye test. Stugat said, I know, without realizing where you were going with that statement. <laughs> he does that. Premature, got, I know. Yes, he, he, I know and I understand are things so that he doesn't have to listen Just anymore to what it, it is moving, that you're Dan, saying. Dan, Dan. Listen. <laughs> Billy, are you ready? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm ready. You want me to go now? Yeah. Preferably. <laughs> Tony, go ahead. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. <laughs> high atop the Watsco Center. High noon tip-off for your Miami Hurricanes. I love a high noon. Jazz band and sneakers, as we've mentioned. There is no spread for this game yet, but I will <laughs> be taking the Miami Hurricanes. Whatever the spread no, is no, 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 against no, the spread. Brought to you by Gus Machado spread. Ford. You've got to sing it as a Miami, Miami minus 40. <laughs> You've got to sing it as a gacky. Against the spread. The spread. <laughs> Billy, what do you got? I'm going to go to the World Highlight League, Dan. This Friday, <laughs> Wait, the yes. Renegades are going against the Wall Warriors. Big one. That's not listed. It is listed. And I'm no. going to go game two. It is. 
Hi, Battle Williams. Court. Yeah, it's here. Right yeah, here. Yeah, Battle World Court is on, uh, on DraftKings. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Proud partner. Mm-hmm. Game number two, Williams and Ubiya against Joseph and Correa. <laughs> If I was taught one thing, it's always bet against Correa. So I'm going to take Williams and Ubiya. Nice. I don't yeah. think that's against the spread. Is no, it? no, no, no. That is against the spread. spread. Now it is. Yeah. If yeah. not, I'll you know what? I'll take, I'll take the Colts minus one over the Titans. No, you're stuck with really? the Well, no, I'll take both then. Yeah, okay. I got two okay. dodges. Uh, we'll right. allow it. Parlay? Whoa, whoa, Parlay? Whoa. I'm trying to close this thing out, baby. <laughs> you're always alleging that I don't do this correctly because I go over-unders, I go totals, I go a money line, I got it, and you say it's got to be against the spread. Yeah, they're minus. 475 so by my understanding they have to win by 475 points and i think they will <laughs> against, the spread. against the spread you are locked in and lead dog status you're gonna win that oversized gummy bear oh no uh, it's not, it's, what? No, it didn't, it didn't grow it didn't grow it slightly grew you know what i took a picture i'll send it to our video department hubba, you can hubba? See. yeah uh, Charlotte, uh, if you're not uh, familiar with what it is Billy is talking about there, he has fallen for an internet <laughs> trick of throw a gummy bear in the fridge and add some things to it and watch it grow to <laughs> no. the size of... Uh, Salt and water, yeah. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Even I don't grew. fall for those. No, it slightly grew. <laughs> oh. It lost its color, though. You got to check the doctor for yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but how, how big was it alleging that it was going to get, and how much bigger did it actually get? And why did you fall for this stupid <laughs> internet thing? Problem well, it wasn't, it wasn't I fell for it. It's that, you know what, if I buy a four and a half pound bag of gummy bears and I put one in and I grow it to, you know, to become five pounds, Billy? and they sell those things for $20, then I, I'm just. I'm dumb not to try it. Billy's making money. Right? Billy's treating this like a pumpkin growing competition. Correct. <laughs> Speaking You're going to go which, up against other big big gummy bears and weigh them. Well, here's the thing about pumpkin <laughs> growing, now that we're talking about that. What happened there, Charlotte? Go sit in the penalty box <laughs> for two minutes. Sorry. Go sorry. sit in the penalty two box. Two-minute minor for, for leaking minutes. confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for falling apart and then just, uh, just, just spitting some, uh, into some, the microphone. some saliva yes, into the microphone. Here's a question for the parents in the room that I'm wondering. Do you ever get home like early on in like the uh, Halloween season and your kid has grown a, from a pumpkin seed a little sprout in a cup? Yeah. 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 So I have that going on, and I was thinking, this thing, I'm keeping it alive and putting water. If I put that thing in my backyard, I have a pumpkin farm, and I'm just making money. <laughs> Say that they were once owned by Elvis. <laughs> Are you ready for useless sound? Uh, play it. Well, give me a second. What is the computer buffering? I have Screwy Lewis up. (laughs) Do you really? (laughs) It's tough to win football games, turn the ball over that many times. Getting to the Super Bowl is a goal, you know, but we're going to just take it a week at a time. That's all we can do. You get mentally tough, more tough throughout the year (laughs) when you go through ups and downs. The biggest argument Wink and I have had is who has the last piece of pizza. So got a lot of respect for Wink. Um, done a good job, so I'll leave it at that. So I, I think the best thing about us, though, is it's about us. It's about us being together. <laughs> we're at where we're at, and um, we, we're just eyes and limits, too. We have everything we want in front of us, but we just got to take it one game at a time. <laughs> whether it's a penalty, whether it's a mispass, whether it's a sack, we got to be on the same page at the same time. Parts of the game, we look very functional. Other parts of the game, we don't. Felt like uh, we didn't match their level of effort and enthusiasm throughout the game. God loves to compete, loves to play football. We've only scratched the surface, ah! obviously. What lessons do I take from it? Don't take anything for granted. We anticipated it being a, a four-quarter game. We won nine games, and, and all those games had to be closed out in the fourth quarter one, one way or another. And these games are, are tough, they're tight, they're close. We just lean on each other in these moments. Um, that, that, that's really all, all we can do. This is the National Football League, and anybody can be anybody. He's one of those guys, he loves competing, and when you've got that natural just zest and enjoyment for going out there and playing the game, and then, oh, by the way, you're really productive. I'm learning um, each week. You know, I think we had some injuries uh, early on. You know, that's it's not, not acceptable to make an excuse, but we had injuries. One man's misfortune <laughs> is another man's opportunity. Yeah, what you like about him is the way he came back. <laughs> Our guys turned that game back around where it felt like we are going to come back and go get it done. And we, we had that sense at halftime that we could. And so it was, it, was, uh, it was good to see that happen almost. It almost got there. You know, I thought he, kept, he stayed in there, kept battling. Um, you know, but... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll get to the tape and just take a look at all of it to, to make sure I'm making the, a smart answer. I'll make sure I have an answer, a better answer for you guys tomorrow, but um, thought he battled. It's a, it's a tough thing to do to, to win a game like this uh, after a big Monday night game and then 
Thanksgiving, you know, you get that tryptophan hangover, so you gotta work through that. You know, we did what we needed to do to win. There are no, no moral victories. Each and every one of us have to look at ourselves, and like I told you, that starts with me, and and that's what you do. Guys like myself and Kenny, man, we're, we're judged based on winning and losing, and, and we don't run from that, we run to that. Uh, so he and I are winners today. <laughs> I love it. That's your coach, Jessica. I love him. I love him. So <laughs> I mean, it is. He doesn't run from it. He runs to it. Everything he says. Cut your is, eyelids off. It's a poem. It is too bad that Stu Gotts just fled the studio chased by authorities because I needed an expert for the story I'm about to tell you that I simply don't understand. I don't understand how some of this is possible. I've lived in Florida all my life. I know about corruption. I know about scammers. You live in Miami. You know that people can get away with... uh, those, you know, scamming those COVID loans. Every day there was a new story about somebody spending millions of dollars here that was supposed to go to some other cause that goes to jewelry or something else. But I'm reading about a director named Carl Rinch, whose only movie is 47 Ronin, which is not the Ronin I know. No. It's the Ronin with De Niro that I'm always scanning through and finding somewhere on the television, just like the Italian job is always on somewhere. This Ronin is not that Ronin. I don't know what 47 Ronin is. It's a Keanu Reeves vehicle. It got a 16 on Rotten Tomatoes. That is the one film this person has made. And evidently, Netflix gave him $55 million to do a sci-fi series that has not produced a single episode, but did produce this director buying five Rolls Royces, a Ferrari, clothing, (laughs) fancy clothing, furniture. He also made a lot of money. This was not losing money on the $55 million. He made a lot of money on Dogecoin uh, and with other, uh, you know, volatile stocks. And I ask you, Amin, Mm -hmm. as someone who worked in a big business that gave out a lot of money, how does this happen that Netflix gives this human being $55 million and he goes on a spending spree? And it's been a while now. I think it's been more than 18 months and they haven't gotten anything in return for their investment. Uh, I I think that when it comes to creative stuff there's an element of we give you money and then you go off and you do your it's not like he's showing up to netflix hq and clocking in and doing his work like have you done your work yet i'm getting there boss it's not like that right it's like he goes to his studio and does whatever it is he does and they say how's it going oh we're good here's some slides here's some dailies or whatever and it's easy to fake that stuff meanwhile you're not creating anything actually in a sports environment, it's a lot more crazier because there is kind of a day-to-day. We see what you're doing. You are clocking in. I remember when I was with the Suns towards the end, our general manager was using the organization as like just to bankroll personal trips to have fun, right? So the Maui Classic would start on a Tuesday. He'd show up on the private the prior Friday. Just just to be in Hawaii for the weekend before the Maui Classic gets started. How do you and- play? <laughs> That's a good move. I this is insane. There's something very weird going on here. I'm I I know a lot of people trying to get movies made it's or, or shows made. It's unbelievably difficult. So for Netflix to like it's it's basically impossible unless you're gonna bootstrap it yourself to get something made. If you have a critical dud, like if you have no movie or a bad movie, it's Almost impossible to get a movie made to get money from these major people. What's going on? Who is this guy related to? Right. What are they trying to cover? Like this is the, and the fact uh, in the Times it's a John Kerry Rue story who who broke the um, Theranos story and, and it, something something very weird is going on here. Well, I, in hearing the details read to me, it kind of feels like Netflix and giving him that seed money was funding a project about this. If you want to have your suspicions about stuff on the internet. What is the internet without its conspiracy theories? The whole plot behind the movie is that they gave him $55 million and he did all this with it, and that would be subject to a Netflix special. I would love if that were the conspiracy theory. What, is works. this a, like you guys in 
consider that fire fest you mean like the i think i think the plot is he pitches them give me 55 million dollars and i'm not actually going to make anything i i am going to be the central focus of this special i'm going to try to make as much money as i can on dogecoin here's the thing though then they would need hulu would also have had to do that so they could have had the dueling documentaries Ah. like (laughs) fire fest How tired are you guys of that, of finding the, the story of Mother God over here and then it's three other movies are being made elsewhere? Like, we really have seen a golden age of content making come crashing to a halt that has gone from a bunch of different people will tell the same story two, three times on the different streamers. because like the Lakers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a number of different stories. Uh, but then the industry kind of closes down. And it's super hard right now to get much of anything made by anybody because the industry has been in such turmoil over the last 8 to 12 months. I mean, like, the, the, there's two things going on. One is, like Charlotte said, it's hard to get something done. As, as we're a content company that is actively pitching documentaries and we're spearheaded by the former head of ESPN, the dude from 47 Ronin just waltzes into Netflix well, and is like, I don't know if you've seen 47 Ronin. So th- there's two things, though, Mike, right? <laughs> One is, like, have you ever made anything? Charlotte, that's the only thing I'm – the only thing worse than not having ma- – or made making something bad is not having made anything. So having made something automatically gets you in the door in a way that everyone else with even great ideas can't. Even the, if it's 47 Ronin. Even if it's way? 47 Ronin, right? But then the other part of this, and this is, this is the critical element, is Hollywood is in, in – kind of enthralled by this concept of IP. Is this an original new idea? Shut up, go away. Is this something based on something from somewhere else? Tell me more. And that's why every movie you see now is an adaptation of a video game or a book or another movie that was made a long time ago or a TV show because everything is IP driven. So I'm curious to see like what is it that specifically about his project probably had ties to something else i think this is the project it could be that he worked with ridley scott he came from him maybe just having worked in that production belichick tree yeah truly he could yeah he could be charlie weiss the charlie weiss of movie (laughs) making where he just gets a shot because he was uh, he was uh, ridley scott adjacent by the way that buyout looking like a good deal right about now (laughs) good for charlie good for nd (laughs) do you think uh Speaking of money issues, do you think uh, when you hear the Joe Smith story, when he tells mm-hmm. Vlad TV that he went from making $61 million in his career to being down to $3,000, mm-hmm. uh, you believe that is how common in sports? It's a bit of a, a cliche. Uh, Billy Corbin made a movie for ESPN about about based that on, subject. Yeah, based broke, on, broke. Based on? based on the article by a young Sports Illustrated writer who was not AI, was named Pablo Torre. Did you guys know that? Uh, he, wrote, he wrote the story that the documentary was built on, bringing us back full circle to what IP, ladies and gentlemen. They want IP. They want to see that it succeeded somewhere else. But Thank I was you. asking you about Joe Smith. Oh, okay. Uh, Losing $61 million. Joe Smith, almost when you play word association with me on the name Joe Smith, I think I've made a ton of money because every time he signed a contract, it was a big deal in that sport. Joe yeah, Smith was a, was, a coveted, he was a coveted person. Now it's Cameron. That's what you do. <laughs> Mine is Glenn Taylor. Because so to give people background who don't know who Joe Smith is, Joe Smith was this player. He was the number one overall pick. And he wasn't really good enough to be the number one overall pick. His draft had Rasheed Wallace and Chris Weber and Juwan Howard and a lot of better players. But he went number one overall. and But he was a good player. So he gets to Minnesota, and he's about to be a free agent, and he's going to sign a big deal. He, he's going to sign a one-year deal or, or something to get him to the bird rights. And then Minnesota promises him, hey, just get through this, get your bird rights, and we'll give you this massive deal. So he agrees. And but his agent is worried. His agent is worried that the owner of the Timberwolves, who is very old at the time, won't be alive to make good on that deal. So they make this under the table deal in writing, and the league finds it. And as a result, the contract is voided, and the, the Timberwolves get like the death penalty, three first round picks taken away, and Kevin McHale has to stay away from the team for a year and all, all this stuff, right? My favorite part about this story. 
The owner's name is Glenn Taylor. He's still alive. He, that was in the year 2000. It is 23 years later. He is still alive. And still owns the team, technically. That is your favorite part of this story. I love it. I, it, I, it. I love the idea of Dan like, we got to have this in writing. I, I, what have he done? He's about to keel over. I can't just trust that the next guy is going to honor this agreement. Put it in writing. Put it in writing so I, so I can sleep well at night. 23 years later, he's alive and kicking. There he is right there, ladies and gentlemen. He's 82 years old now. and what? So he was 59? They thought he was going to kick it. Uh, forgive me, because now that we have the video of Glenn Taylor, it reminds me that I've forgotten to go to other video that we have, the investigative work of one Billy Gill. He went into his fridge. He <laughs> took a single photograph. And Billy, if you'd like to uh, introduce this story so that people can see how you wasted your time by uh, by partaking what? in an internet uh, scam. I did no such thing. So, I, you know, we had a vacation. We had some days off for the holiday. And I liked, my mind doesn't take days off. I like to investigate things. So I saw on the internet, that if you put a gummy bear in with some salt and some uh, water, that it'll grow. So I said, you know what? Seems like free money to me if I just buy a pack of gummy bears. I can have these giant gummy bears. I could, you know, start a company, whatever, sell them. They'll be a little wet, but whatever. So I went and I did it. It took about two seconds to do. Set it and forget it. The refrigerator does all the work for me, and then here are the results of said experiment. <laughs> it is bigger. Now it, it is a giant bear. It's I like only a... I only left it there for about two days. I feel like maybe this is a long term commitment. I left it there maybe two months. What's or more. the scale? Are these both giant gummy bears mm -hmm. next to one another? Uh, I think you can or see. Or is that from your the, standard gummy bear on the right? You can see right. from the weave of the paper towel, Mike. Yeah, well, that's I a giant make, paper towel. That's a giant paper towel too. He put that yeah. in the refrigerator as well. <laughs> it's actually a duvet cover. <laughs> Billy, it's pretty close. Uh, it is pretty close to being twice the size. See? It's inflated, but I don't know how much flavor you lose once you've lost the color. I wouldn't put that thing in my mouth. The, color, <laughs> the color of the... Well, what's the point of make, getting more gummy bear if you're going to put less of it in your mouth? I'm selling them. <laughs> Billy, I'll eat it. Bring it in. Plain it's in the trash. I'll cook up another one today. Thank you. Right. Charlotte, don't... Yes. You've been over the I'm eating curious. of things on the show before. <laughs> Plain gummy bears once owned by Elvis.